In this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate the change in entropy for the whole entire universe, which seems like a really big deal, but actually it's pretty simple. So the definition of the entropy of the universe comes from our thermodynamic definition of the system and the surroundings. In thermodynamics, we said that the system was the process that we were studying. For example, like this chemical reaction right here. This is some sort of reaction. This reaction is our system, what we are studying. And the surroundings, we said, is everything else in the whole entire universe. So by that definition, the universe constitutes our system and also our surroundings. And therefore, the change in entropy for the universe is going to be equal to the change in entropy for our system plus the change in entropy for our surroundings. So you see, it's actually not that big of a deal. Now in chemistry, the system that we're studying is almost always a reaction. So what I'm going to do is take this S system and I'm just gonna replace it with the word reaction to make it a little bit more um, applicable directly to chemistry. So the entropy of a reaction plus the change in entropy for the surroundings together add it up, this gives us the change in entropy for the whole entire universe. One last detail to add, because these numbers are typically calculated using standard entropy values, this is typically going to be a standard entropy, a standard entropy, and a standard entropy. Remember that standard entropies are just referring to data that was collected under conditions of one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius, our standard conditions. So I've already shown you in the previous video, I've already shown you how to calculate the change in entropy for a chemical reaction. To do this, we're just going to be using Hess's law, products minus reactants. So we'll be looking at a balanced chemical equation. We'll be looking up the standard entropy values for all of the reactants and all of the products. And then we will do products minus reactants and use Hess's law to calculate the delta S for our reaction. The change in entropy for the surroundings is a little bit more difficult to calculate because no chemical reaction is taking place in the surroundings. We can't use something like Hess's law. We don't have any products. We don't have any reactants. The change in entropy for the surroundings is based completely on any sort of temperature exchange that takes place between the system and the surroundings as the reaction proceeds. So for example, if the system is exothermic and it is giving off heat, that heat is going to be used to warm up the surroundings. As the surroundings warm up, the molecules move faster and faster, and as they're moving faster and faster, their entropy increases. On the other side, if our system is an endothermic reaction, one where the temperature goes down, that means that the surroundings are going to be donating or giving heat to the system. This area out here is going to feel very cold. It's going to have a temperature decrease. And as a result, the cold temperature in the surroundings, this will cause the molecules to slow down, which will cause the value of delta S to decrease. As they slow down, they'll become uh, less disordered and less random. So in order for us to calculate the delta S of the surroundings, we need to know how much heat is being exchanged between the system and the surroundings. We also need to know what direction the heat is being exchanged. Is it warming up out here? or is it cooling down out here? Uh, and the way that we're going to do this is with the enthalpy of the reaction. So as you recall, the change in enthalpy for the reaction is what gives us the amount of heat that's being exchanged. Let's write an equation over here. The, for the delta S of the surroundings, the delta S of the surroundings is based off the change in enthalpy for the system, and we're going to need to put a negative sign in front of this. So why do we need to put a negative sign in front? Well, um, if the system is exothermic, so that would be a negative delta H, that means that it's losing energy. 
all of that energy is going out to the surroundings to warm it up. So that means that the delta H out here is going to be a positive number. So whatever the sign is for the system, we need to reverse the sign to make it applicable to the surroundings. And I realized I wrote system again, let's change that to reaction because again, we wanna make this really specific for chemistry. I'm gonna use the abbreviation RXN. The other variable here is the temperature, the, the pre-existing temperature of the surroundings. So the change in entropy of the surroundings doesn't only depend on how much heat is being given to or taken from the surroundings. It also depends on the previous or the, um, the initial temperature of the surroundings. If the temperature of the surroundings was already really, really hot, and then we donated a little bit more heat to it, maybe it's not that big of a deal. But if the temperature was really low and we donated a ton of heat to the surroundings, that would have a huge impact on the entropy. So to calculate the change in entropy for the surroundings, we're going to use the delta H, the enthalpy of the reaction, reverse the sign, and then divide it by the temperature. We're going to calculate the delta H of the reaction using Hess's law, which we've done before. So again, this is going to be products minus reactants, but this time we'll be using delta H values to calculate it. And this number down here, which is just simply going to be the temperature of the surroundings, and it needs to be in units of Kelvin. That will make it um, consistent with the other units in this equation. So if we wanted to kind of simplify this reaction, or maybe not simplify it necessarily, but make it immediately applicable to us, we could say that the change in entropy for the universe is equal to the change in entropy for the reaction as calculated by Hess's law minus the change in enthalpy for the reaction divided by the temperature of the surroundings. And this is the equation that we can use to streamline the process of calculating delta S of the universe. Now, why do we want to do this? What is the point of this at all? We can use the value of delta S of the universe to help us predict whether a reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. So if the change in entropy for the universe is greater than zero, if the entropy is of the universe is increasing, this means that the process is spontaneous, which means that it happens all on its own. We don't have to do anything to make it happen. If the change in the entropy of the universe is a negative number, it's less than zero, this means that the reaction is non-spontaneous and it's not going to happen unless we do something to help the reaction proceed.